What's going on people, your boy Flex here for you and I stand. I'm here at the Football Blacklist event. It's not awards, although there's awards handed out, event. Sponsored by The Voice and the Premier League, fantastic. It's a celebration of black and ethnic minority influences in the game of football today. And not just in the game of football, but in the communities around the country, around the globe, to be honest with you, it's fantastic. Jordan Jarrett is behind me, look at him, he's going, he's going crazy, he's going crazy. Get, get, why are you always doing it? They think it's Ty Dollar Sign, but it's not. <laughs> I'm always going to say it. Um, you know me, I'm always going to be here representing United Stand and looking for Manchester United influencers and ex-players. Andy Cole. Andy Cole is here. We're going to go have a word with him. Let's see what he has to say if we can get an interview with him. What's going on United Stand? We are here at the Football Blacklist. I am joined none other by, I don't even need to say your name. Like, United, the United Stand, no, I don't even need to introduce you, Andy, I don't. But we're here at the Football Blacklist, man. I mean, ethnic minority players, black players, and not even just players, people from grassroots right up to the professional game, man. How important is this event, man? It's very important. I think you can tell now because every year it's getting bigger and bigger. Um, talk about next year changing venues, so yeah. Oh, it's squash up and you know what I mean, yeah. that's sardines in it. <laughs> but we'll get there, right? Yeah, 100%. Is it important to recognise that in, you know, in today's game, you, you've seen the, the rise in some of the, the racist incidents over the last sort of 18 months, a year, and we, we haven't liked it. The England team have done a really good job of dealing with that. But away from that, is it, away, is it important to, to deal with this in our own country and recognise, you know, people that have really achieved things in that, in that area? First and foremost, we need to deal with it here. You know, we can't talk about other countries until we sort ourselves out. You know, you touched on it there, the England players, you know, the way England's gone about it. It's been, it's been very, very positive. Mm. Um, I like to prepare to make the starts. You know, the players are prepared to walk off and, yeah, I, I can relate with that. When you was playing, did you experience a, a, a lot of what maybe, because obviously the social media aspect wasn't quite there. Did you, did you experience it though? I, I think it's, it's, it's only small pockets. Yeah. You touched on it there. I think even more so now with the social media stuff and all that, because it's a lot of, uh, a lot of faceless people, mm. you know, so they can get away with it. Hiding behind little avatars yeah. and display pics. There you pics go. And there you go. So that, that's the disappointing thing, but I, I, I do like the way uh, England are trying to combat it. You know, the other people, your wafer and FIFA, I think they need to address their problems. Mm. United. We can't not talk about United. Obviously, everyone wants to hear your thoughts on United. You do an amazing job just with what you do in the ambassadorial role as well. You, you know, flying around. I see you at Wes Brown as well, Dwight. You're, it's great stuff. We played against Park G Sun in the summer and Wes on the top. How's Park this fit? He shouldn't be this fit. I know. G, G's very, very fit. <laughs> I've, I've said to G, you still could be playing now. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, you, you should have just taken some time out. You should have put on some weight by now or something. You know what I mean? But United right now, you know, look, we know we're not where we want to be right now. Mm. But in terms of the way that we're going, you know, the club spoke out of that, they're, they're backing Oli, they're backing the long-term vision. Is that important for you to get behind a project, a long-term vision to, to, to get us back to where we want to be? It's, it's got to be. Um, I think that, that's the only way forward because in football, you know, there's no quick fix. Mm. You know, Manchester now, we, we've dominated football for so long. You know, we, we, we're definitely going to have a down soon. Mm. You know, the manager's changed and... You know, we, we're taking a little bit of time to get back to where we need to get back to. Mm. Uh, it's a process. Mm. You know, Oli's been given opportunity, and I, I think Oli's done okay so far. Mm. You know, um, like I said before, and there's no quick fix. You know, give Oli the opportunity, like we've done with every other manager. Mm. You know, and let's see where we go from there. Because you're looking at his three signings that he brought in: <laughs> Maguire, Wambasaka, and James. They've been the highlights. Mm. So if that's, you know, uh, and uh, if you're looking at it, if we're going to go in that direction. Young, hungry players, you know, willing to prove something. Yeah. Is that the mould that you think, actually, you know what, that can work at United right now? Well, I, th I think with, with, with Manchester United, it's never going to change about winning football matches. Mm. You know, if the young players, if the senior players, hey, the main thing is we've got to win matches, you know. Mm. And to win matches, that's when you're going to start winning things. Mm. But I, I do like the signings that he's brought in in the summer. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a few more signings come January. Well, that's what I was going to come to, January, you know. Uh, we let Sanchez go, we let Lukaku go, it, it comes to that. And I'm not going to ask you to name names, but 
do you, do you see Solskjaer and, 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 the, and the, the people above going, do you know what, let's look at January to, to strengthen? Uh, not, nothing will surprise me. Um, I, I think, you know, when, when you're talking about buying in January, it's, it's a difficult period as well because you've got a lot of teams it's in the Champions League. Mm. You know, to try and uh, prize those players out of those clubs is going to be difficult. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if there is a couple more young players coming in. That wouldn't surprise me. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised come the summer if Manchester United have, have a right go again in the summer. Mm. And I hope, I hope we do that. What's a successful year for us? From this position we're in, look, we, we've been like this. If we can finish in the top six. You know, um, if, if, you look, if you look at the top four at the moment, you know, it's going to be difficult for us to break in there. But if we can finish in the top six, you know, I, I think we've had another good season considering where we're sitting now. Mm. Uh, Liverpool are running away with it, but it's still... It hurts, long... Andy, man. It hurts, man. Yeah, it yeah. wouldn't have happened in your day. No, it no, would... no, no, no. <laughs> You know, that, that's... You not wouldn't have let that happen. Nah, look, football speaks and troughs. Yeah. You know, Liverpool not won a title for, what, 20-odd years? Yeah. You know, and that, that's football. Football's a cycle. Um, we're going through ours at the moment, mm. but fingers crossed. It won't take us 30 years to win a, win a Premier League again. <laughs> Which it did you lot, you know what I mean? Liverpool fans. How do you look at, you know, you look at Man City, you look at Liverpool. How far off do you think Manchester United are from catching the top two? I know Jose's just gone to Spurs and he might want to have a say. But how far do you think we are of realistically challenging for top, top honours? We're a few years away. Mm. I've, I've got to be honest because if, if you're looking at those teams, you know, every year they're going to move on and get better and better. I think with a team like Manchester United to attract top players, you've got to be playing Champions League football. You know, if you can't guarantee someone Champions League football, it might, it might make that sell a little bit harder. Uh, but fingers crossed, you know, the next three years, we would deal with about. You know, mm. we can close the gap and, you know, we can start being what Manchester United is all about. Our club's the biggest club in the world. I don't care what anyone says. You know that from yeah, yeah. when you were there. And even though we haven't been at the races, we're still the biggest club in the world. Do you think that if we keep continuing to struggle to, to reach the heights that there could be a shift do you know what i mean like city are coming through liverpool coming through do you think there could be a shift or you know what united is still a powerhouse yeah of course Manchester united is still a powerhouse but we get this answer this question all the time i mean when, when you play you, you want to know that you've got the opportunity to win the champions league or to win the premier league fa cup mm. league cup or whatever and like i said before Manchester United can't guarantee that to players. Yeah, it can't, you know, yeah. Back in, when I was playing for Manchester United, everyone would have come to Manchester United. You didn't think twice, did you? Like, Newcastle, you're like, I'm gone. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, could be, yeah. You know, you know we're going to be in the mix. You know, so that, that, that could be a harder sell, but it's all about what players want to come to Manchester United for. You know, because we've got great tradition, you know, we've been the most dominant team in the Premier League for how many years, so... So all that are still unique selling yeah, points yeah, on the club, course, isn't it? of course. And Andy Cole, what are you up to now? I mean, what? I said, you know, I went to the Legends game. What? You came over like a couple of little yeah, minutes, and he, yeah, yeah. I was like, "This is the return." And he's back. And then like, I was like, a minute and a half into, I'm like, "Where's he going?" No, I'm, I'm, I'm not allowed to play football anymore. To be fair, <laughs> yeah. but it, it was just nice to be out there. It, it was nice with my, um, to be out there with my lot of my old teammates as well. You know, it's, I, I enjoy my ambassadorial role. I enjoy that. It's really good. You know, and I'm enjoying a little bit of coaching out South End as well. Yeah, it's coaching something that. You want to get into at the highest level, you know? Could we see Andy Cole the manager? Could we see Andy Cole the, no, the director no, 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 of football no, no. or technical director? We, we, we leave the management <laughs> stuff out. No, nah, it wasn't for you. Nah, it's not for me. I, no, I, I've, got, I've got to say my hat off to, to, to Seoul, Seoul Camera for giving me the opportunity to go back in, you know, into football. You know, he's given me the opportunity at Macclesfield, and then he's gone to South. Any want to bring me in there as well? So, you know, whatever he decides to do, you know. If, ultimately, I, I think. So wants to manage at the highest level, and rightly so. Yeah. If he gets the opportunity, I, I could be coaching at that level. We just have to wait yeah. and see. Believe in it, Andy. Brilliant. Respect for talking to us, man. Thank you, very much. Thank you bro. No, nice one. Big thank you to you guys for watching the latest of our videos. And if you want to check out more, make sure you do that. Just to the right of me, we are the biggest and best Manchester United channel in the world. Make sure you check us out on all of the socials as well: Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. The socials are along the bottom. Peace.